Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the third episode of the Girls Frontline Generalist's Guide. Let me just get myself nice and fucking comfortable over here. So, on the last part, we tried to clear up Chapter 1. There's not really a whole lot of anything else that you would need to do other than kind of aiming for that anyway at the beginning. So I figured that would be a good start, but I just wanted to level off with my account as well and things that I have done to show you that some things are indeed capable of being done as well. Even if you do not have uh, some particularly higher leveled T-Dolls at that stage. Also, these are things that seem to be part of a... Um, I think this is for just playing the game, to be honest with you. I, that's what I really think that this is for an event. But if it is not the case and it is an event for right now, then I'm not going to um, utilize these things that I wind up getting for rewards out of this as legitimate rewards that you guys would have. I do not know what would be available to you at the time when you start the account. However, I will say that FNC, this three-star T-Doll right here, is a very high recommendation, and she slaps. She definitely slaps. She is quite an easy T-Doll to obtain as well, so I won't really be using her until she is a drop. But uh, until that point, that's really everything that I have topped off on what I have gotten on this account. But um, I'm just running a bunch of logistics runs for a number of different teams. I think I did all four to do logistics runs while I was offline. I didn't really do any auto battles, but I'm going to cancel everybody from doing anything here. And then we will get back into the swing of things in a moment, as well as grabbing my batteries from my dorm. So let me just... Let me just do all this shite. Now, there's a number of different things. Number one, you should also be aware of my level 14 commander ranking up here, and that's because I was just doing a bunch of different runs to get all of my silver medals and stuff, and as well as clearing X mode on Chapter 1, which you can do. You can definitely do that with uh, level 10 2X T-Dolls easily. Uh, the problem, more than anything, would be trying to swap out your handguns for ARs, to be honest with you. Handguns are just not going to do you very much service when it comes to... Uh, dishing out damage, and those ARs are just going to do a much better job, especially when you get a couple of upgrades on them, but, uh, we have picked up the thingy. I'll wind up working on my, um, dorm, which we'll talk about that very shortly, very briefly in a moment. I just want to see what I wind up having in my, um, in my production here. Oh, yes, that's right, I pulled a K2, which, uh, she's a highly meta, very good five-star T-Doll AR for the late game. She's really good at, uh, she has a very great early game, but I think she falls off the later end of the fight that she goes. I'm not 100% sure about that one, though. Do not quote me on that, but I think she has a really strong early game that levels off a little bit more, and there are other ARs that are better for the long play than she is, but she is really good at clearing out things in, like, six seconds or under, which is pretty much the aim for late game. Uh, another T-Doll that I wound up pulling from production as well is a two-star uh, two AR. Alright, hurry the fuck up. Is a two-star AR that is actually in one of my team compositions right now, which is F2000. High recommendation on this AR T-Doll. She um, boosts evasion and damage, which is pretty decent if you want to put her in your top left position. She can also go in the middle position, in the mid-left as well, and boost evasion of your main tank. But the reason being why I highly recommend her is because you'll realize that she will top a lot of your damage most of the time, because she is a damage-boosting AR. And you will see that over even the OTS-12, who I think has higher damage than F2000. No, she actually doesn't. Not at the moment. They have equal damage. Uh, she has slower ROF. All right, cool. So she has a slower natural ROF, but it goes up when she uses her skill. But it's just another proof to you guys as well that you'll realize in fights, F2000 will do more damage than OTS-12. And then when the fight goes on longer, because she has more shots, uh, the OTS-12 that is, because you can't see my mouse cursor, but uh, because the OTS-12 shoots more than F2000, that she will do more damage in longer runs. But F2000 will 9 times out of 10 top the damage out of this group. But going back over here, you want to do this, uh, you want Sten to be your main tank. You do not want Scorpion to be your main tank if you have to choose. She's better as an off tank, especially because of that incendiary grenade doing damage. She just doesn't have the HP to keep up with being a main tank. When you get a little bit more evasion on her, yeah, she can be a little better in the earlier game. But Sten's going to do you a lot more favors because she has 196 HP versus Sten's 230. That, that's, that makes a big difference when you're trying to take as little damage as possible and just keep T-Dolls up and in the battle. And again, Spectre M4 is kind of just an unmatched main tank that you will have. 
Eventually, I'm going to move this around so that I can do something like this, but, uh, unfortunately, Spectre M4's tiles are just really poopy for what I'm trying to do. So, I don't know. I mean, I could always put this handgun up on the top and just have Galil boof her. Boof her, yes. Boof her! I'm gonna do that, actually. That's exactly what I'm gonna do. Uh, rate of fire. I mean, that's something I would want on my off tank. See, the, the whole entire... I may swap the P-38 out. What else do I have for handguns? PPK. Uh, PPK's not great, but, uh... I don't really have any good handguns. Maybe when I find, like, a better handgun, sure, but... And that would be a good person to have in the back for, uh... I don't know, man. She Her tiles are really weird. I'll have to figure it out later, because I need a better handgun. But that's for certain. I'm just trying to grab all of my stuff and fill in the time slots here, because I haven't logged in yet today, and I wanted to jump in right when I had all of that good stuff to show you guys. And I wanted to show everything that I have unlocked with this account in the meantime. And I want to try to make sure, like, at bare minimum, I am recording every other day for this account. So I don't have, like, a bunch of shit built up on my accounts from just doing things and just time going by for login events and stuff like that. So that when I jump in, I have, like, everything under the sun. So I want to try to get on here, like, every other day to show you guys where the account is at. Alright, so I think we have finally caught up with everything. Good, I've also unlocked research. So let's just jump in here for a minute. I can't really do anything in research at the present moment because we don't have any of these up at the top. Which is basic, intermediate, and advanced uh, intel, I believe is what it's called. But what you do is you go ahead, you select training, you would pick somebody like this. OTS-12 has the assault focus for uh, all of that stuff. Mostly you would want the duration for like your three-star T-Dolls because some of their focus skills are really, really, really quick and they just end so fast, especially with like FNC, for example. Where is FNC? FNC's initial damage focus is terrible and you want to buff the shit out of that as soon as humanly possible because that is just 35% increased damage for three seconds. That is like two shots. That's not very much at all whatsoever, and you would need a hundred of these basic uh, research components or whatever the fuck that they are, basic training data, to be able to do it. How do you get basic training data? Well, it's very simple. The reason why they're waiting until uh, you are rank 12 to be able to do this is because at rank 12 you also unlock combat simulations. Again, I unlocked this by doing X mode for chapter 1, which is more than capable of you being able to do. If you guys have seen, I don't have any 3Xs. Yeah, they're level 20, but most of these T-Dolls aren't really even upgraded. So they don't have, like, better than base stats that they had initially. You can level up your T-Dolls all you want, but it doesn't really help you that much if you're not upgrading them and bringing up their stats as they level up. And, uh, their stats are not that game-changing from their base stats at level 1. And that's what I'm trying to tell you right here. But I have all of my medals for emergency, and we can... Not getting a night battle yet, it looks like. We got a complete 2-4 emergency, is it? Yeah, emergency 2-4 is when you unlock your first night battle set. But the reason being is because this 1-4E is a pretty good uh, area to be able to get a bunch of stuff. You can get a number of different T-Dolls, including a 4-star SAA, M9, Astra, P08, uh, C96, Ingram drops from here, as well as Galil. So you have a lot of good choices of uh, drops that you can get from 1-4E, but combat simulations, like I said, they will rotate every single day. Think of them as like domains from Genshin Impact. They rotate depending on the days, depending on what you want to run. This is data mode day. We're not going to do... Actually, we can do this right now really quickly, just so that I can demonstrate to you. It uses these sim energies that regenerate over time. I think it's two hours per sim energy that regenerates, so you can technically do 12 sim energy worth of runs per day. And I'm going to uh, fill in this team. You can. This is completely independent, by the way, of any other dolls that you have that you're running. This is completely fucking independent. So, depending on what your other teams look like, it, it literally doesn't matter. You can just run whoever the hell that you want, and uh, you can have a damn ball. I need another assault rifle, Galil. What is my formation? Yep. And what are you, a damage? I'm gonna do that. There we go. And that should do. 
And I don't have equipment unlocked yet, I don't think, because I think that was Commander level 20. I don't remember. Either that or it is 2-6 that you need to clear. One of those two. But uh, the data simulation things are pretty easy. You just send people in there, they do damage to this thing, and you either kill it in 30 seconds, or it does X number of damage over this amount of time, and then they give you rewards accordingly. So I think that will beat it. Oh, maybe not, actually. Maybe we won't. I also removed skill cut-ins, so... That's a thing. But right now, my damage is poopy. It'll be much better, again, when I get uh, everybody to uh, 3x, but uh, 120 basic data you get from that. I'm not gonna run it more than once, but that's just an idea of what you guys have to deal with when it comes to that. That's just the data mode, but you also get tons of XP from doing this, as well as enhancement capsules, and this is pretty much the only way to get it, other than through events and stuff. Or from rewards from various different things, so. Alrighty, I wanted to talk about... I don't care about you. Don't make me do research, Kalina. Don't don't make me do a research, Kalina. Fuck's sake. I don't want to waste that either, but... There. Good. Okay, so back to dorms, like I was trying to say originally before I got rudely cut off by Kalina. I wanted to go ahead and go into these rooms, because I never actually explained what they do. But, uh, I think I mentioned a while ago, and I'll mention it again. If you go to resupply, you'll wind up getting these tokens that you can spend on, um... Mostly for outfits is what you want it for, but you get furniture out of it, which will increase your battery rate based on this furniture score in the top right corner. Pets can also boost that as well, which we will get into. Fuck it, right now. So if you go to rescue station, look, Chinese pastoral cat yellow. Because I have upgraded my cat bed, I could adopt it if I had 600 batteries. I do not have 600 batteries, so I will not adopt the cat, unfortunately. I would love to, but I cannot adopt the kitty. And I'm going to actually upgrade some of these other areas as well. So I'll do that one. And uh, this is the rescue station. That's pretty much exactly what it does. You need to upgrade this workbench to upgrade everything else in the room to a higher level because it can only go to the level of the workbench on the far left. And uh, that is level one. So I'm going to just wind up upgrading everything to level one and then workbench to two, etc., etc., etc. Higher level of these will get different pets for you, which will really only be super important for you when you unlock expeditions, which... We will get into later, but I need to be uh, rank 20 on my uh, commander rank to be able to showcase that. The other thing that you get is the data room. This is this is imperative. This is the best thing that I can tell you guys. This is absolutely imperative. Now, I need to upgrade this to a better computer, which uh, this just decreases the amount of time that it takes to write combat reports. So, as your dolls gain experience, a portion of that experience is con converted to surplus XP. This is only really relevant when you start maxing out uh, T-Dolls and they are level 100 or whatever their max is after you do neural upgrades and stuff because they can go beyond that level 100 cap. But at base level, for example, right, max level T-Dolls will gain 25% XP that they get. You can, I think, upgrade this to 100% by the end. I do not 100% remember, but... Uh, they will get a shitload of their XP that they gain at max level and turn it into surplus XP. Which you then go over to this desk, the plane desk, work, and then you can write combat reports. Which is, I think, three batteries per combat report over X amount of time. They will write all of those, or Kalina, rather, will write out all of those combat reports. And that's what I was doing to boost everybody's XP. There are other ways that you will gain XP as well, specifically through expeditions. That, again, I can't really showcase until later on down the line, but... That about tells you everything that you have available to you from dorms right now. And over time, that'll be unlocked, and I'll explain that to you guys in time. But, before that, I also need to do some of these. I have been mostly just getting my ARs, because ARs are kind of just the most important thing right now, and any SMG will do, so long as you get them appropriately upgraded. So, I'm going to continue to do my ARs, as I have been doing. Uh, 352. We got another 5-star sitting there. Interesting. I'm just gonna wait until, uh... Nah, you know what? I'll quick produce it. Fuck it. So that I can, uh, get two more going. A SIG 510. I can actually use her. Another K2. I'll take it. I'll fucking take it, man. That's fine. 
And then another one. In fact, what I'll do is I'll upgrade K2 to level 10 using combat records, because I think I have a few of those, and that'll mean that I can actually use her, which would be dope. Can't do it because she's skill training right now. Son of a bitch. Alright, whatever. I'll do it later. Doesn't really matter. But we're supposed to be doing Chapter 2 right now anyway, ladies and gents. So we're going to work on that one now. Okay. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, Chapter 2. So let's go ahead and get a move on here. I may build some more teams as well. If they're not dummy echelons, then they'll be legitimate teams. So depends on what is needed. Yeah, this can be done with just a simple team. How many rounds do I need to clear this in? Three turns, eliminate four targets. That's, yeah, that's easy. The problem, though, is that uh, when you hit later runs, I don't know if this mission will count, but in later runs, these heliports, if they're red, it means that they actually will summon other, uh, other teams towards you. So you want to make sure that you have um, those under control when you start doing later things. So who do I have for ARs right now? Do I have any other ARs I can use? Not particularly. If I was smarter, I would have set this up earlier, but uh, I'll just use the two. you go, and then that's a great way to just start out anything right there when you have two echelons. Just bring two out right there. Sometimes you'll have different areas where you can deploy people, though, which makes a big old difference. Now, if you guys remember the swapping tactic that I was talking to you guys about a while ago as well, then here's a great way that you can utilize that, for example. So, if I move this over here, we can win that heliport by encirclement in just a moment here. I just can't remember if they're going to wind up summoning more units from it, though, so I'm just going to play it safe regardless. So one thing that is sort of big brain that you can do about that is the following. I'm going to summon another echelon in on my CP and then swap with it, I believe. Or at least in the next turn I'm going to swap with it. Actually, better yet, let me throw this SMG in the front line here. Let's do that. Whatever gets sent out, it's not going to be super powerful, so uh, I'm just going to do this just to demonstrate a point. I might actually take a lot of damage doing this, though, but uh, you can just do that. Swap right off of there. There you go. Now I have this echelon right here at the ready to take out these diner gates, and they start coming down here, and we'll take that by encirclement. So, yeah, that, that's really all she wrote. Not really much else to see in this mission right here, though, so I'll probably just jump cut until we clear it. So we can go ahead and get the gold right now, or we can go for the blackout method, which I think I'm going to go for blacking out the field first. 
Yeah, fuck it. I'm gonna go in blackout first. And if you do not have a dummy echelon to clear this, ladies and gentlemen, then don't worry about it. This is more than capable to be done with two echelons. The main thing you just want to remember is just don't let your CP get encircled, and yeah, it's pretty straightforward. There's not really any hint that is needed for this, to be honest. Two should be plenty. And then there we go, that's all she wrote, ladies and germs, so there you go. Now that strategy right there, by the way, is what is known as a dummy echelon. It means that you have a team in your group that is not meant for combat, and you can even just bring them in as just like a level 1 handgun or something, but they just serve as a placeholder so that you gain extra moves, because the more echelons you have out on the field and the more heliports that you have, the more moves you can make with all of your echelons. So... Having a dummy echelon on the field can actually make or break a run, absolutely, so. This one... I think I'm just going to summon a dummy until I get further in, to be honest with you. So let me bring my main echelon out. So remember, you can get encirclement if you just keep going twice rather than summon another echelon in, so... That's probably one of your smarter moves to do right at the get-go. Other than that, like I said, I'm probably just gonna summon a dummy and then move over to that heliport right next to me. In the next round, I will bring out an actual battle echelon. And again, if you don't have a dummy, you can clear these with two echelons pretty easily. By the time that you take this heliport to the right anyway, that other team that went on the top, the farthest that they can go is to your immediate left. So you just attack them, and then you summon your second combat echelon, and then continue to slap everything. And then you can even just flip-flop if you have one more efficient combat echelon. Just flip-flop with the one that you just summoned on that heliport, and just continue for the CP. Like such, and there you go. That actually makes my life easier, too, because I can just encircle the top left and not have to touch it. And even without a dummy echelon, even if I didn't have that dummy down there, actually, you guys can do exactly what I did right there and just summon and place down as well, which makes things even easier because I can win on the next turn. I don't know if that's actually going to be an S rank and a silver medal, but um, or at least a gold and a silver medal, but uh, we'll find out momentarily. Uh, alright, hold on. So, how many rounds? Three turns. So, now nah, we're just gonna go for a blackout. So, that's really about it. But if you clear 2-2, however, guys, what you also have is access to the first easy XP grind stage that you will have to be able to get all of your dolls to level 30 and be able to 3x them. Which is going to be the next thing that we're going to wind up doing. And then starting in the next episode, we will try to clear Chapter 2 entirely. So the goal of this is to be able to unlock your Stage 2-3 and then get all of your dolls to 30. 
And I'm going to uh, provide reference material for you guys as well for optimizing your leveling strategies as well. The best leveling stages for your T-Dolls is knowing about when that, that XP falloff is for the stage and trying to find a stage that you can clear in one turn or auto running it, which I will I will demonstrate to that uh, that to you momentarily. But uh, 2-3 is going to be the first one of these kinds of stages that you will have. So this place has two areas that you can summon from. So you can do this <clears throat> with two dummy, or with a dummy echelon and a main echelon, or whatever that you want to do. You can do any kind of echelon over here, but again, the reason why they're here is for the extra moves. That is their entire purpose. But I'm going to summon my main echelon right over here. I'm going to hit start. We're going to refresh all of their supplies, and we're going to end this round in one turn, end this uh, whole entire battle in one round. So you need to actually eliminate eight enemy targets to be able to get any special metal out of this. We're just going for the clear, though. So you can hit planning mode in the bottom left corner right here, and what will happen is when you click on something, you're planning out where people go. So what this also means is it tells you how many action points that you have. You can even go above and beyond and do something fucking bullshit crazy like that and then it doesn't matter and then you hit execute plan and it'll do that and it'll tell you the negative moves that you have and it'll keep doing that until the amount of moves that you have done have ended what it also means is if you were to do this rotate go over here and do that it'll do them in that sequence so this echelon will move to the bottom right then the second one will move up and then you can keep rotating back and forth it'll go in that order despite what that line looks like right there on the left side it's not going to do what it looks like i assure you it's just very confusing on the way the UI is, but it'll operate properly when you do so. I've done this enough times. So, what you want to do is just do that, 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 and then that. It'll take out these four enemies during that one set, and then it'll end the fight once you take the CP. So you can just auto-run that. You can walk away from the screen. You can do whatever that you want. You can take a sip out of your cup of water like what I'm doing right now. You can do whatever the hell you goddamn fucking please at this point. It's just they're going to auto-run the stage for you, and then that's going to be that. And then you're going to rinse, wash, and repeat until you get two echelons to, or at least one echelon to level 30 and 3x. That is what your goal is going to be for this episode. Now, in the last episode, your goal was just to clear 1-6 and try to get uh, two teams, or at least one team, to uh, level 10 and 2x, but I recommended two teams to be level 10 and 2x. And if you wanted to, you can clear your emergency stages in the first set. And the reason being is because if you get gold medals in your emergency stages, you actually get more gems out of it than the base levels. There are fewer emergency stages, but you get 30 gems versus the usual 10 for a gold medal. And then I think there are some chapters that give you 30 gems instead of 10. Or they may even just change and get more and more depending on how far in the story that you go. So... Gold medals are just important for being able to expand everything, and I'm just going to save my gems as much as humanly possible and not worry about collecting dolls this time around just to see what result I get out of it. And just like that, it isn't easy enough to clear, so there you go. And then again, like I said too, if you guys have two teams that you're leveling up, I can send my SMG dolls from this team into the repair bay and then send my other team to do it next and just have a dummy echelon in the background. So the, your possibilities are kind of endless with how you do that anyway. It really doesn't matter. The echelon that is on your CP does not matter. So there you go. You end the turn and that's that. And then there's your XP grind. You just keep doing that until everybody is level 30. We're going to do that until we have two teams. And again, that is your homework and your fucking thing that you should be doing during this point. If you want to, you can also, for extra credits, get the first three stages in 2-1, 2-2, and 2-3, and get your gold and silver medals in those, if you really wanted to. I will have that done by the next round of uh, recording session that I do for this. And then in the next one, we're going to try to clear Chapter 2 with your two teams. That'll be what your goal is. And if you want, we'll just assume by the next round, not this one, but we'll assume by the time that you come back for the next episode, for Episode 4 that everybody is uh, level 12 and will have combat simulations and research unlocked, okay? So we're just going to assume that by that point. But uh, right now your goal is to clear emergency one. Once you get your 3x, 
or even before that, if you would like, you want to clear and get all of your gold and silver medals out of Emergency 1 and your normal stages if you haven't already. And you are to get two echelons, or at least the bare minimum of one echelon, to level 30 and 3x. And you should have a decent amount of T-Dolls to upgrade people as well throughout that. That is what your goal is for this episode. And then in the next one, we'll be coming back to clear 2-6. There's a lot of things that you get that are good out of clearing 2-6 as well. And that's going to wrap up the episode here, guys. So that is what your goal is. I will see you later. Take it easy.